Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e and this is a, a miniature or mini combat workshop or tutorial and we're going to cover the very basics of the fighter at level 1. And I have actually selected a particular uh, character which is a little bit out of the norm for fighters. It's not quite normal to select the, uh, the pre-made character sheet that I have picked up for today. But I thought it would be interesting for you guys to see how versatile a fighter can be. And also too, that you don't have to always select the most optimal race to play a character and still have it be effective. I know a lot of people are under the assumption that you have to pick a particular race uh, otherwise it's not going to work and that's really not the case. So we are covering the fighter although the image that I've pre presented to you is not really a good depiction of the fighter we're going to be using today because instead of using your standard human I thought it would be nice to use a high elf. So the the details and information I'm showing you right now you will find them down in the description just have a look down there it is the High Elf Fighter Level 1. Um, there's a pre-generated character sheet that gives you uh, Level 1 right through to Level 10. I'm only going to be covering Level 1. The things to, to notice is, one, you have Sage as a background. You've got a pretty good armor class. It's not too bad. It's a, it's a 17. You've got a reasonable num number of hit points. That's 11. Uh, the things that are really important to focus on is that this particular fighter is based around not strength but dexterity. So we're going to be using our rapier and we've got some darts if we need to use them. Not a very good weapon uh, unfortunately for um, this particular fighter but if you're at a push you would use it. But we have access to a cantrip called True Strike and we're going to go through the process of using True Strike in this particular example. We're also going to go through the process of using something like the second wind should our fighter get banged up enough that we need to do that. Okay, so on to the action, shall we? Into our opening scene. So our opening scene is the rat-filled sewers uh, below Waters Deep and <clears throat> I'm going to just say it's Rex for today. I know it's not a very, very elfy name, okay? But I'm going to say that Rex for this case is uh, been asked to go and find a woman by the name of Eleanor and Eleanor has uh, somehow managed to get lost uh, she was uh, exploring and picking mushrooms down in the sewers and they haven't seen her for a while and so it opens it up um, at this point where <coughs> Rex is uh, wandering through the um, uh, sewers has his shield on and um, for this situation we're going to assume that you know Rex understands that it could be dangerous down here. There's some pretty big rats down here. They don't breathe fire or anything, but you know, potentially dangerous. And uh, comes around the corner and notices that there is a woman over in the corner uh, of the sewer section and calls out and there is an immediate response. He thinks it's Eleanor, but it's not actually Eleanor. It turns around and he can see that the, the face is gaunt, it's hollowed out, there's bits of flesh hanging off it, the clothes are all tattered. It smells putrid in here as it was, but you can tell that the smell coming from this thing indicates that it's probably rotting, which means it's probably undead. Um, Rex has found himself a, a zombie. So we're going to roll initiative because the zombie uh, makes a horrible noise sort of growls and mutters and starts lumbering towards Rex. So that's where we're going to open it up with. So we're going to start with rolling initiative. I'm going to use the, the purple dice for Rex. I'm going to use these, uh, what would you call them? Sort of reddish, orangish colored dice for the zombie. And we're going to roll initiative. I'm going to start off with the, uh, the zombie. The zombie has a dexterity modifier of minus two. So that's our initiative modifier. We roll our 20 sided of dice. Okay, so I rolled a 15, I'm going to add minus 2, and that's going to give us 13. So that's our zombie. I'm going to just put the zombie here, because I don't know where our um, Rex is going to go, where our fighter is going to wind up. Okay, so that is only a 13. Is that clear enough? I'll just rub that out a little bit and make it a bit clearer. 13 is our initiative. Okay, so now that we've rolled initiative for the zombie, let's roll initiative for the fighter. 
grab your dice, roll 20 side dice, I roll a 5, add the modifier for the fighter, now the fighter has a plus 3, because the dexterity modifier is plus 3, okay, so it's going to be a lot less, it's only going to be 5 plus 3 is 8, so our fighter is going to be going last, so we'll go here, fighter, and that is 8. So now that we've done our initiative, we just place them into order. The highest number goes at the top, which means the zombie goes first, and the fight will go last because it's the lowest number. Okay, very, very simple. I'm going to use these little magnets over here to indicate who I'm dealing with each time, just to make it a little bit easier for you to understand what's going on. Um, also, too, I thought what I would do is I would uh, draw a box just over here to indicate how many hit points they have as we go through our combat. And you can see how uh, it works as I deduct things. Okay, so this will be our our hit points, just like so. All right, so starting off with the zombie, the zombie doesn't move very fast, so all it's going to really do is try to move towards its target. It's not very smart; doesn't get into um, complex um, tactics like dodging or anything. So it's got a speed of 20 feet. So we go 5, 10, 15, 20. Each square represents five feet. And we're going to use, uh, that's our move, we're going to use our action and do a dash. Now dash allows us to move our distance again, our movement speed. Okay, it doesn't mean, dashing doesn't mean you get to move twice your movement speed, just your movement speed. So another 5, 10, 15, 20. So that's got us to here. That's pretty quick. So things are going to happen fairly quickly, okay? So it's now up to the fighter to take their turn. And of course our zombie makes more horrible noises and you can opens its mouth and you can see its rotten teeth. So our fighter then decides it's time to do something. And instead of moving closer, the fighter's going to move further away. But first we're going to take the opportunity to cast the cantrip True Strike. It has a range of 30 feet. We are within 30 feet, so that's 5, 10, 15. And we want to cast it on this target, which you can see. And that will allow us to have advantage on the next attack that we have before the end of our next turn. So next turn we're going to get advantage on our attack. So we're going to cast the spell, which means we don't get to attack this turn, doesn't matter. And we are going to move backwards. So that'll mean that the zombie will have to come to us. And the zombie's going to get one, two, three, zip. So if we move back to here, we can delay the opportunity for the zombie to take an action. We don't have to go here. We can also, if we want to, we can take our character around the side here, moving it back out of reach uh, so that uh, you've got time to sort of uh, prepare yourself and get your spell ready to do its thing. It's concentration, so we don't really want the zombie to have an opportunity to attack us. So that's why I've done that. It's now the fighter's um, turn complete. We've done everything we can do. I'm not taking a bonus action at this point because we're not injured, so we don't need our second wind. And it's back to our zombie. Now all our zombie is going to get to do now is move towards the target. Now there's a grate here, can't move through this location, it's going to have to follow around. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Now when you're going around edges of uh, walls and so forth, you can't go diagonally, okay? You have to go right round. Um, it's really just part of the variant rules that you'll find if you're using gridded play. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's not too hard. So you're gonna have to actually move twice. So I move, use my action to dash, and that's all I can do with my zombie. So my zombie has done its, um, done its turn. We're, this is the uh, top of uh, round two. We're now into round two for the fighter, who can now make an attack with advantage. And this is the whole point of setting yourself up with a spell. So we're going to use our purple dice, and I've got another dice here. Both, both dice are going to roll two dice because we get advantage. You roll two dice when you have advantage. I rolled a one and a 15. Now I don't worry, need, to, need to worry about the one because we don't. we only take the highest roll on advantage. So the 15 is good. So we add 15 to our, our plus 5. He's going to pull out his rapier and try to stab our, our zombie. Pretty much that's what you would do, right? So 15 plus 5 is 20. 20 is greater than or equal to the zombie's armor class. An armor class on the zombie is only an 8. So all we're ever going to need to do is either get an 8 on our attack roll or more. And we hit our target. So we've definitely hit our target. It's not a critical, but never mind. And now we get to do 
some damage. Now, because this particular uh, high elf fighter has taken the fighting style uh, dueling, that means we get a plus two bonus to damage rolls with our weapon. So normally with our, our rapier, we get a eight-sided dice, we get to roll that, and we're gonna add our strength or dexterity modifier, whichever is higher, because it's a finesse weapon. Because our dexterity is a plus three, it's gonna be plus three. But because of the dual wielding, we get another plus two, that means we get to add that on as well because we're only wielding one weapon in our hand, the other one has the shield. Okay, so that means we're gonna add five to whatever I roll on the dice here. So I roll the dice, oh, it's done really, really well. So eight plus five, the grand total of 13. So 13 damage is pretty good. It didn't take the zombie down. The zombie actually has 22 hit points. Okay, and we did 13 points of damage. So we deduct that, and I will just rub that out. So 22, take away 13. That should come to nine. So nine hit points left on the zombie, which taken the, the first hit. And that's all good. Um, we don't need to worry about that. We're not in, worry, in, in trouble yet. Our fighter actually has 11 hit points. So we're looking pretty good considering the amount of damage we just did. Okay. So that's how your true strike works uh, when you're using your, your weapon that's a, a melee attack. It doesn't have to be a, a close quarter weapon, it just has to be any weapon and it needs to be held in one hand. So we could use a dart, and oh, sorry, um, that will only benefit you uh, with regard to something like your, um, um, your dart, but if you want to get the bonus on the bonus damage from your jewel, dueling, you'll need to do melee attacks, close quarter co um, combat attacks. Okay, let's do the next next round. Go back to the zombie. Zombie's turn. The zombie's going to do what it normally does, which is we'll make an attack, roll our 20 sided dice, and we add the attack modifier. In this case, it's not very high. I think our zombie's going to get slammed pretty badly today. So it's a plus three to our four. Four plus three is a grand total of seven. The armor class of the high elf fighter is 17, so it's not equal to or greater than, so the zombie doesn't hit the target, not sufficiently anyway to do any damage. Okay, so that's the end of the zombie. That's all it really can do. So we'll get rid of that. No damage caused yet. And now rolls round, and we're gonna have our fighter make another rapier attack at, uh, at the zombie. So grab your 20-sided dice, Roll your dice, I roll a five, it's not very high. I then add another five, that's the attack modifier for my rapier attack. So five plus five is 10. 10 is greater than the armor class of the zombie, which is eight, remember? So we hit our target. You wouldn't believe it. Hitting zombies is actually very, very easy. It's just a matter of getting through all their hit points. And now roll our damage. As before, now you'll notice with that attack, I didn't have advantage. That's because true strike only works on the next attack that you make before the spell ends. And the spell only lasts one round, and it's concentration, so you need to make sure you don't take damage. So that's why I only rolled one attack um, dice roll, only one d20 for that attack. Roll our damage, I rolled a piddly one, but it's all right, we get to add a five to that. So one plus five is six, and we'll deduct that from the nine on the zombie. And zombie now has three hit points. So we're doing pretty well. Okay, put that out of the way. Move our marker back up. Our zombie now gets to make another turn and gets to attack again. I rolled a 20. Now 20 is what's called a critical hit. It doesn't matter what the modifiers I have for my attack are. It's gonna hit no matter what. Not only that, it will do twice as much damage in terms of the damage dice. So getting a 20 on an attack roll is always good, okay? So I get one um, six-sided dice for my attack with the zombie, and because it's a, a critical hit, I get to add another six-sided dice. So we've got two six-sided dice, and we're gonna add our modifier, which is plus one for the damage on the, uh, the zombie. Okay, so roll those. Okay, so I got a, a one, and I, sorry, I got a two. I don't know if you can necessarily see that. I'll just bring that down here. Is it clear enough? Okay, I've got a two, I've got a four, that's six plus one, 
is seven, so seven damage from the zombie on our fighter. It's all right, don't panic yet, don't panic. So 11, take away seven, comes to four. It's looking really, really close. You'd think that we'd be in trouble, but we're not in trouble. This is exactly what I was hoping would happen so I could demonstrate everything. It's nice how things have worked out. I do appreciate it, Dice, thank you very much. Okay, so our zombies had their attack. They're not gonna bother moving, they're not really interested. They've got to their target, they don't need to do anything else. It's down to the fighter. First thing I'm gonna do, since I've taken some damage as the fighter, I want to sort of get back some of my hit points. And I've taken a hard enough hit that this is a good time to use the second win feature. So on your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain some hit points, and that is one d10 or 10 sided dice plus one for this character. So it's usually a 10 sided dice plus your fighter level. So whatever your fighter level is, not your character level, but your fighter level. So if you're a fighter who's level five, then you get to add five to the 10 sided dice. But in this case, we're only level one. So I'm gonna grab a 10 sided dice. This is this one here. We get to roll that and add one. And that's how many hit points we get back. Okay, so I got a six plus one. So that's seven. And that means that essentially we should be pretty much back to where we were before. Now we haven't used our movement, and we haven't used our action, only our bonus action. And there we are. We're all healed up. We have recovered from our wounds, or sometimes hit points are more a depiction of fatigue rather than actual wounds. It might have simply just been a scratch. But the fighter sucked it up and ready to go again. Now, we've only used a bonus action, we still have our movement. We're not gonna bother using our movement because we're right next to our target. Instead, we're gonna make another attack. So get that rapier out and roll your 20 sided dice. I got a 17 this time. I'm not going to use the true strike cantrip again because I don't have time to get myself far enough away from the zombie to make it beneficial. It was good at the beginning, but if I were to continue, it would probably, it would probably work against me. So hence, that's not why I'm doing it. So 17 plus the five for our attack modifier for the fighter. So that's 22. 22 is more than equal to or greater than the zombie's armor class. We hit our target, roll our damage again with our rapier. It's eight sided dice, I rolled a seven. And then we add our five, seven and five, 12. So we do 12 damage. Now here's the thing. That means we've just knocked the zombie down to zero hit points. Now it's, it's going to fall, but there's a thing with zombies and it's called Undead Fortitude. Now Undead Fortitude looks, works like this. When you reduce the zombie to zero hit points, it gets to make what's called a constitution saving throw. And that DC is set by this number. Five plus the damage taken. So I'm gonna add five plus whatever damage the fighter did to the zombie. And that is the DC that I need to get with the zombie for it to be able to not die. In other words, to stay up and have one hit point. Otherwise, it's going to perish. If it takes radiant damage, which it didn't do, it would be killed by this blow. Uh, if it had taken a critical hit it, and it was dropped to zero hit points, that would have killed it outright and there would be no saving throw for the zombie. But because that's not the case, the zombie gets the saving throw. So I'm going to grab a 20-sided dice. Now the DC, as, we, as I was discussing, it's the damage. So we did seven on our dice. So it's seven damage, plus the, the damage modifier, and that is going to be a five. So that's a grand total of 12. And then we add another five for the calculation, and that comes to a grand total of 17. So 17 is the DC that the zombie needs to get for it to not perish. Now that's quite hard to do, but they've got a high constitution, so <laughs> it's possible. So 17 is the number the zombie needs to get. So roll our 20 sided dice. I rolled a three and I add the constitution modifier or it's saving throw and it's only a three. So three plus three is six. That's not equal to or greater than the DC that's been set by the fighter because it's done so much damage. Hence, the zombie goes down and uh, it's dead. Now I know a lot of people have asked questions about zombies and when this feature comes into play, so I'm going to answer that question right now. 
essentially this is how it works and you can do it however you like okay it doesn't state when it, the zombie is dropped to zero hit points that it falls over make the constitution saving throw and if it succeeds then it's going to be on one hit point and it's still standing but if it fails it falls over and it's dead and then you're done it's pretty simple it's not too complicated so I'm really hoping that sort of answered most of the questions with regard to sort of how to use your fighter uh, in combat we've covered stuff like true strike the cantrip we've covered second wind we've covered the basics of making attacks we've covered the basics of moving using um, bonus actions actions dashing all of that has all been part of this particular video and I'm hoping that that has made it crystal clear so you have no troubles playing in your game next time so hopefully you found this uh, interesting educational or useful in some way if you didn't find it interesting or useful in some way please let me know I do understand if it wasn't useful to you I'm trying very hard to make sure it's going to be stuff that's relevant relevant to you but if you did like it please share and like the video uh, if you like the sort of content I do more of this sort of stuff sometimes for players sometimes for dungeon masters so consider subscribing to my channel hitting the bell button to be notified when I go live and sometimes I, uh, I publish videos that are pre-generated and pre-recorded as well so that'll notify you when that happens as well if you want to support my channel you supported my channel by watching this video and I really do appreciate it thank you very much uh, you can watch more of my videos and that will continue to support me so I keep doing videos and I know that I'm not wasting my time or hopefully I'm not um, I don't do Patreon but down in the description you'll find affiliate links to the book depository and Amazon where you can buy stuff online I get a small commission you pay exactly the same price just go through the link buy what you want you don't have to buy the thing I have linked to but you do have to go through the link for it to benefit me um, and that's pretty much it there's not too much else I need to say other than look if you have questions feedback um, all of that you can start putting that into the live chat right now if you're not part of the live stream then consider um, putting a comment down below did I get something wrong would you like to add something are there any questions you had did I go too fast um, do I need to present a few more um, I don't know do I need to make my whiteboard a bit bigger do I need to draw and write out the numbers that I'm calculating as I go just let me know and I'll do my best to see if I can make that happen and hey Till next time, keep rolling those 20s.